essays, and short stories about things that I love, things that, uh, that well, that make me happy. And uh, like all of my books, uh, well, most of my books, it is uh, the title, I, I stole the title from a band. It's, it's, uh, I stole the title from Pink Floyd. Uh, so, I was, um, well, I, so I'm a stepdad. And uh, I was just a stepdad for a really long time. And a couple of years ago, my stepson Ryan asked me if I would adopt him. He came home from college, and he, uh, <laughs> and he said to me uh, one night, he said, listen, uh, I've been thinking. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad, because that's not what a lot, that's usually not what you do when you're in college. <laughs> and he said, uh, I really, all the things that I love, all the things that are important to me, and all of the things that really make me who I am, I got from you. And you've been my dad for my whole life. And I was just wondering if you wanted to make that official by adopting me. So several minutes later, when I had composed myself, <laughs> I said yes. And um, we, uh, we entered this ridiculous ridiculously long process uh, of an adult adoption, which I think should be like this. Do you want him to adopt you? Yeah. Do you want to be adopted? Yeah. All right, you're done. <laughs> as it turns out, no, you actually get to navigate a bureaucracy that is as easy to navigate as it is to get the Babel fish in uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide text adventure. <laughs> so um, this story uh, I wrote when Ryan was I think he was probably 14 or 15 when, uh, when I wrote this story. And because we're at a comic book convention, um, it's a story that, on the surface anyway, appears to be about comic books. Um, it's called See a Little Light. Bob Mould's voice came out of my computer speakers. He's saying, listen, there's music in the air. I hear your voice coming from somewhere. As I dug through a cabinet in my office beneath my desk, I sensed movement behind me and felt the presence of another person in the room. I turned and I saw Ryan standing in the doorway. He's 21 now, by the way, so this was like six or seven years ago. What are you doing, he asked. I'm looking for my GURPS horror book, I said. He came into the room and crouched down on the floor next to me. The GURPS game, it seems pretty cool. Yeah, I said, it's really fun and was one of my favorite systems when I was your age. I thought for a second. Wait, I mean when I was younger than you. God damn it, I feel old. <laughs> I pulled out a stack of graphic novels, thinking that maybe my GURPS books were behind them, and I carefully set them on the floor between us. Ryan pointed to V for Vendetta, which was on top. I've been thinking about it, and I think the book is better than the movie, he said. It usually is, I said. <laughs> they should have kept in a lot of the stuff they cut, and they sort of changed the entire meaning of the story with the screenplay, especially in the third act. I dug deeper in my cabinet, up to my elbows in a lifetime of geeky literature. Yes, I agree with you, I said, and so does Alan Moore. <laughs> my Gerb's horror book was not there. I sighed heavily, exasperated, defeated. What's wrong, he asked. I can't find the book, and I'm pretty sure that means it's in the garage somewhere. Oh, man, he said. That's like minus 10 to your search roll right there. <laughs> I was too frustrated to laugh, but it put a smile on my face regardless. I don't think there's a parent in the world who would get too frustrated to enjoy a glimpse of himself as it flashes across his son's face. Yeah, minus 10 if I'm lucky, I said. I picked up my books, and as I began to put them back on my shelf, one of them caught my eye. Hey, I think you'd like this. I handed him a copy of a book called Vertigo's First Offenses. It's a few issues from classic Vertigo titles, like Fables, The Invisibles, Sandman Mystery Theater. You gave this to me when you got it a few months ago, he said. I really liked it. Oh, awesome. I set it back on the shelf. Yeah, Fables was great. I put more of my books back. Watchmen, a few Hellblazer, the entire collection of Preacher, all my hardback Sandmans. Bob Mould finished singing and 
Michael Stipe replaced him. Ryan, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but my throat had suddenly become dry and I stopped to swallow. I think you're mature enough to have full access to my comic book and graphic novel library. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> it's been the happiest days of our lives. 